um, at all and um, back recording. And so thank you, Dr. Lee, for coming on. We have many more questions. So let's continue the questions. Um, yeah. Persons are like questions. Another question. So I guess we are is a question and the time. Um, um, so there is a question here. There's many questions. I just saw someone put, "Who oh, can I get pregnant?" But that's 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 further down the the line, in, and we have a hand up. And so the person is asking, um, "Where's the? What is the fastest way to get rid of a sore throat?" that just started okay so with a sore throat there's many ways to help with that um you can get a piece of cotton uh, like a strip from a t-shirt put it in icy cold water and wring it out wrap it around your throat and then put a piece of wool over that and then put some saran wrap um over that to keep it from the uh, the cold and just pin that and uh, leave that on for a few hours and chances are your sore throat will clear up in a few hours um there there is another excellent thing for sore throats which is manuka honey manuka honey is very high in enzymatic action methyl glycol and that can uh, deal with a lot of your strep throat, you know, uh, staphylococci, bacteria. So you could try that. Um, you can also mix it with a little lemon water. Uh, you can also gargle with salt water. Um, that can pull out the, the moisture out of the bacteria and kill them. Um, you can also take a little bit of charcoal um, with a just a small amount of peppermint and that can also help some people use eucalyptus oil just be careful don't take too much of that um, so you can actually put one drop in a piece of honey and wrap the honey over that and just slowly swallow that so those are some of the best remedies for sore throat all right thank, thank you for that answer um, so the person is saying that what can be done to con for to done for continuous mode blister and dry lips. What blister? Uh, mouth blisters. So they have blisters oh, in their mouth and for dry lips. And for dry lips. Okay. So keep him keep well hydrated for dry lips. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so mouth blisters. I'll tell you, the best thing I've used for that is a herb called camu, C-A-M-U, or camu camu is commonly known as. And this is a fruit from the Amazon jungle, that is, not Amazon as we use it, online Amazon, but... Um, this is very high in vitamin C. It's got more vitamin C in a teaspoon of powder than a whole bag of oranges. And this will help repair those mouth sores very quickly. I had one and I tried some Camu and literally within a, an hour to two hours, I felt um, it, it was healing up. So, um, yeah, I would definitely try that because it helps with connective tissue repair. And so that's what you have with ulceration. Thank you for that answer. Uh, Sister Jean, please unmute. And then we go back to the, the, the questions in the, in the chat. Go ahead, Sister Jean. Yes, good morning again, Dr. Wellard. I am so thankful for all your responses I'm here writing down getting you know all all the important <laughs> juices however um my question is um about diabetics you know um people are suffering from diabetic what exactly is there like a recommendation that you can help them 
who are actually and going through it that can really put a pause on this what the 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 you know like yeah. yes we, i guess you're talking about type 2 is that right type, yes type 2 diabetes yeah thing. yeah well when i worked at wildwood that was uh biggest clientele was diabetic patients and um they would come in with sometimes bags of medicine and it was so good to see them go out. Uh, usually they would go out with no medicine. <laughs> and really diet and exercise are really the key in, in restoring uh, people from diabetes. And, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll tell you some dietary things that are contributing significantly to diabetes. And that is high fructose corn syrup. Um, and that's in virtually all your processed food. So if you stay away from processed food, in fact, if you look at the, the, the graph of when uh, high fructose corn syrup came in, uh, it correlates, it uh, parallels the rise in diabetes. And I'm not saying this is the only cause by all means, but um, it's very, very significant when it comes to a dietary um, component. And now, um, Sometimes people are thin like me and they still have diabetes. Uh, and it's not all dietary caused. Um, there's 20% of people that have stress induced diabetes. And so when you have a lot of stress, your body is pumping out a lot of sugar and that can contribute to diabetes. Uh, but if you get a lot of walking and also, you're careful about your diet. I'd say 95% of the time you'll recover from that. Now, some there are some herbs that can help with diabetes, and I'll give you a few of them. One is what we call bitter melon. Bitter melon helps with insulin resistance. Uh, also, you can use gymnema or gymnema silvestri is the botanical name, and that uh, is very good for diabetics. Um, Another one is fenugreek seed, which um, slows the transit time of sugar into the body. It has a chemical called 4-hydroxyisoleucine, which stimulates the pancreas to produce more beta cells. So that is something you can also take. Turmeric root is another thing um, that helps with the inflammation. Now, if you look at diabetes, you'll find that it's very similar to heart disease. In fact, 80% of people that have diabetes die from heart disease. And the reason for that is because they're very much correlated. So diabetes is a micro circulation problem, whereas heart disease is a macro circulation problem. So diabetes, you're clogging up those small capillaries. You're, you're affecting the micro circulation, which ultimately leads to problems with macro circulation. So you need to help with the circulation get the blood flowing. And that's where exercise, that's where hydrotherapy, diaphoretic herbs come in. So it's a complete package. When you're dealing with di diabetes, you, you want to address the whole person. But um, anyway, that's a, we could do a whole <laughs> few hours on diabetes. I'm <laughs> it's sorry. The big I'm topic. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Uh, um, just a touch on, on, on hypertensive also with that. I am done now, just that. I um, have been having issues with hypertension and I try to do everything. I do my exercise. I, I, my diets are good. Um, I know I have a little issue with sleep because I don't sleep well, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do because I do not want to take the medication. Sure. Yeah, I understand. So, um, yeah, sleep is a big contributor to, uh, to hypertension because it affects the stress hormones. So it could be that, um, you know, you're, you're having higher levels of these stress hormones and that is a big part of hypertension, right? A lot of people... Uh, stress-induced hypertension. Um, one out of five people have the white coat syndrome. So they get stress going to the doctor and then they're on the medication from the doctor. <laughs> so, 
And um, so, yeah, I tell you what, reach out to me. But um, with hypertension, one of the best things um, to use for that, I found is Hawthorne Berry has uh, three calcium channel blockers, three ACE inhibitors. It helps with nitric oxide, which helps with vasodilation. It helps with left myocardial contraction. It helps lower cholesterol. Um, it helps with systemic circulation. And um, yeah, it, it works very effectively. If it's stress-induced hypertension, I would use uh, uh, some holy basil. That's a very good adaptogen that helps with blood pressure issues that are due to stress. Um, of course, if it's sleep that is driving that, then you got to get to the cause of that. So um, is it because you have an overactive brain? Is it hormonal that's keeping you awake? You know, there's over 100 different causes to sleep problems. There's over 100 different herbs for sleep. So it depends on the cause of the sleep problems. But um, if it's stress, then I would highly recommend taking something like oat straw. Um, oat straw is very helpful for keeping you in a deep uh, deep sleep longer. It stops you waking up too early. Sometimes it's hormones, especially around menopause that affects the sleep. So you may need to use some hormonal um, botanical to help with that. Anyway, I'm just shooting in the dark here because I don't want to put you on the spot asking you too many questions, but <laughs> but uh, feel free to reach out if you if you need more help with that. Thank, thank you, uh, Doc, and thank you for that question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> um, my ankle swells up every day, week, walking. Oh, not much swollen. Okay, so it says my ankle swells up every day, and it says waking up not much swollen, but both ankles swells up and my veins are more visible. I guess when she, she walks in the day, the swelling goes down. And then when she wakes up, it is not as swollen. And then when she starts walking again, it swells back up. Okay. A, a really good aid for that is um, taking dandelion. Dandelion is the best herb I've seen to help with swelling and edema. And it works because it's high in potassium and potassium um, has a effect in the body to flush out sodium. And every gram of sodium flushed out, you lose 70 grams of fluid. So I would use some dandelion, dandelion root tea or an egg, one extract. Either one can help you with that. Uh, and instead of cutting them off your lawn, uh, reap them and use them. Lawn, remember, they're always on your lawn yeah. and they are annoying. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, you know, mm -hmm. If I can just say this, herbs are like Jesus. You know, they're up in the last resort. <laughs> they, get, they get very abused as well. And um, they're within the reach of everyone. And some of the best herbs are the most cursed herbs. Like we, well, we think they're a curse. Like thorns, some of the thorns and thistles are blessings and dandelion root and nettle and, you know, red clover mm. and all these good, good herbs that we mow over with our, our lawnmower. <laughs> uh, next question. Can you speak to the benefits of sorrel hibiscus used as herbal tea. I have been drinking every day and want to know if there is there any harm in overconsumption. So that's a red sorrel um, in Jamaica. They make tea with it with a ginger, the, the alcohol, add everything to it. That's yeah, what yeah, she's yeah. talking about. I think she's just drinking it yeah. as the normal tea without the extra stuff. Yeah, so sorrel is good stuff. I mean, it's uh, it's also used in the Easyac tea, which is for cancer prevention, or can some people use it for cancer uh, if they have it. But um, yeah, it's a good anti-inflammatory herb. It's very good for the immune system, and it's good nutrition. So can you overdo it? Yeah, you can overdo anything, actually. I mean, you can overdo water. You can <laughs> overdo exercise. Um, you may want to 
if it, it depends what you're taking it for. If you're taking it for nutritional support, then just change up the herbs you're using. So it's really a, a herb that I recommend continually. Um, you know, but uh, there was some other herbs. You mentioned red clover. Red clover was a herb that Ellen White used on a regular basis. And red clover is one of the best herbs for nutrition. It's high in isoflavins. It's very good for preventing cancer. It's also high in uh, these phytoestrogens that help block the fake estrogens in the body. And it can actually help prevent um, things like breast cancer. Um, it's also good to lower PSA levels in men. So it's good for the prostate. It's very good for the blood. It's a blood thinner. And it, in the body, these isoflavins convert to brain-derived neurotropic factors, which increase synaptic sprouting and enhance brain capacity. So that's a very good herb to take. It's high in nutritional support. Um, yeah, it's a blood tonic. Um, it's good for the ladies' hormones. Um, if you're having hot flashes due to a lack of estrogen, it can help with that. Um, it's very good for circulation it's it's good as an anti-inflammatory um so many benefits to red clover so yeah i would definitely recommend that one okay thank you uh my good friend uh is asking about um says my wife was asking about low iron low iron this is a common problem i'm seeing this more and more yeah so Again, it comes back to digestion, all right? So um, if you have poor hydrochloric acid, then you, you can't cleave the iron off of the protein. And so you'll have a reduction in, in iron. Um, also, you know, some people um, need more iron than others. Um, anything that's, that's red uh, or black, or green leafy vegetables are a good source of iron. We have what's called heme iron and non-heme iron. Um, heme iron comes from meat products and it's often recommended as the best iron because it absorbs better. But what studies show that the heme iron actually contributes to more oxidative stress on the body. And so, um, yeah, I definitely recommend the the excuse me, plant source iron. Um, and uh, if people are anemic, I recommend things like blackstrap molasses, also nettle. Nettle is one of the high sources of iron of any plant in anywhere. So this is something I often recommend. If you combine it with vitamin C, you'll get better iron absorption. And sometimes I recommend chlorophyll because that also helps with the iron. Um, and then it uh, depends on the cause. So a lot of people have anemia from, from stress. Stress will affect hemopoietin levels, which is a hormone that's secreted by the kidneys to produce more blood. Um, you know, Mary Hart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit tries the bones. And yeah, so um, getting, getting enough um, joy in life is really important. You know, we people underestimate the importance of of joy <laughs> you know one minute laughter a day will increase your body's immune system 24 hours yeah five minutes of anger will suppress it for 24 hours so you know being joyful you know one of the fruits of the spirit is joy love joy right and peace and uh, i don't think we have enough joy in our life today. That's why Amen. God gave us Amen. fellowship to enjoy and yeah. Do I, I encourage people to do something uh, every day that they have joy in doing, you know. Amen. You know, one of the things on this platform and we have a, a WhatsApp group and I say, did you smile today? Because yeah. there is a lot of benefit just by smiling. And we don't, sometimes right. we don't remember to smile. <laughs> you know, we get yes. caught up with stress. 
I forget to yes. smile. Yes, I, I can tell you that stress is probably 90% of what drives disease. Mm. Drives mm. bad decisions. Don't make any decisions out of fear. And you'll mm. be far better off in life. Amen, amen. Um, the question here, there's another question here. What is the best use for depression and anxiety disorder? Depression and anxiety yeah. disorder. Okay, uh, for depression, I highly recommend the Son of Man, the Son of God. <laughs> yes, I came to give you life, life more abundantly. Now, uh, there are some, some foods that can help with depression. So omega-3, omega-3 fatty acids are good for depression, and B vitamins help with depression. And as far as some herbs go, um, there is St. John's wort. Now, St. John's wort, if you take it for depression, it's for mild to moderate depression. And it should be taken three times a day. All right. Now, uh, with people with severe depression, they have up to 60% of their blood flow to their frontal lobe reduced. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's important that, um, you know, God knows even some of his prophets have, had depression you remember elijah ran from a, a woman that had hormonal imbalance <laughs> so so um he he found himself under a tree called the juniper tree do you know juniper is good for depression <laughs> the leaves actually help with depression and they also help the berries help with kidney function he was running from a, a woman and uh, he had depression and God had a tree for him that could help remedy the situation. <laughs> um, really? Oat straw is another excellent herb for depression. Oat straw, it's very high in minerals that feed the nerves. You know, you know, I think often that people get depressed also because they have a wrong view of, of God. They're, they're living under condemnation or or fear or judgment and they're not free in the law they're not free from guilt and worry and fear and distrust and and they they haven't let god do his part in removing all these negative emotions you know god never designed us to experience these emotions but he tells us to bring them to him and often uh we resist his attempts to draw us into that rest you know i tell people that god is trying to save us from our attempts to save ourselves <laughs> you know, you know when, you, when you touch uh elijah um he got two meals per day Remember? yes that's right yeah two meals the his entire lifestyle changed, you know, yeah, and so that's right. um, we have, I call it the health book. The, the, the Bible is also the greatest health book discovered or written. And so um, all of our issues, check the, the, the health book, the Bible. And thanks, thanks for sharing that um, depression, anxiety. You know, um, what about anxiety? Because I know that's a loop. You you start out with A and you keep repeating yes. A until you get yes. the change the entire structure and the fill up and the um the heart and the heart rate increase and then all kind of stuff happens just because of how we think, right? That's right, that's right. Now anxiety isn't always due to uh, thoughts it, it most of the time is actually but sometimes it isn't uh, for example yesterday i had a visit from a lady who had um she had anxiety she she said I, i'm not thinking anything negative i'm pretty cheerful and uh, then we got a call from a doctor as i was talking to her and he said she was very low in b12 Mm. I said, well, that, that could drive it right there. So I sent her off to get some B12. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there are nutritional things that, that do affect anxiety. 
uh, when you're low in B vitamins, you tend to be more anxious. Um, and there are some herbs that can help with anxiety. So uh, again, oat straw is very good for that. Um, this helped my wife. She had six years of no sleep past midnight. It was the only thing that helped her. And uh, she recovered after three days. She was back to eight hours sleep a night after uh, six years of, of no sleep past midnight. Um, kava root is another one. Now, kava has kava lactones, and this is very relaxing. Um, it's very good for anxiety-induced insomnia. But please do not take kava with alcohol. It is very toxic when you take it with alcohol. So you must take it as a glycerin. So you use things that are called nervines. Nervines help calm the nerves. And with anxiety, you don't have calm nerves. Okay. So um, yeah, so, so nervines are things like passion flower, skull cap, valerian, oat straw, things that are relaxing. Um, yeah, and as I said before, do do something every day that is joyful, and uh, also take a, a table. What's good for anxiety as well is is just going for a brisk walk, take the dog out for a walk, um, have a have a bath in some nice uh, a nice warm bathtub with Epsom salts and maybe a little lavender that can help take away some anxiety. Or even better, go into a field of lavender. And I, I guarantee by the time you leave that field, you'll have not a care in the world. <laughs> Amen. Uh, yes. Question, what do you recommend to treat irritated gums or even gum disease? Did you say irritated gums? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so... I take it they would be inflamed. Um, you could do a mouthwash with myrrh. Okay, myrrh is one of the best things for, for gums. And another thing you can use is oregano oil. Or should I say, I mean, let me rephrase that. Oil of oregano. Okay, do not, I'm not going to recommend essential oil, oregano or oregano that's from volatile oils because that is quite irritating uh, it's very very concentrated and uh, it's very caustic so uh, oil of oregano is is very good for that you just do it as a mouthwash and uh, yeah if there's any bacteria in there that is causing the gums to be infected that will take care of it Okay, thank you. Uh, what is the best way to treat osteoarthritis pain? Okay. Well, it depends how how severe the pain is. Um, and if it's isolated in some parts of the body. Um, so I would say turmeric root would be a good place to start because it's anti-inflammatory or chronic disease has one thing in common, it's pro-inflammatory. And so, you know, if you, if you look at um, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, God says, if you keep my laws and my commandments and my statutes, statutes are health laws. Okay, health laws come under the statutes. He said, I'll put none of these diseases upon you, which I brought upon the Egyptians. Now, he doesn't list the diseases of the Egyptians in Exodus, but if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, it lists the diseases of Egypt under the blessings and curses. Of course, it's under the curses, not the blessings, but um, pretty much all of those conditions are inflammatory. All right, so all chronic disease has an inflammatory component. Even depression is inflammatory. So... Um, so yeah, turmeric root is, is excellent for any type of inflammation and uh, rheumatoid arthritis, of course, is, is definitely under that category. And then hydrotherapy can also help. Hot and cold showers can help. Um, you know, 
avoid uh, inflammatory foods, right? Uh, avoid the living in the golden arches. <laughs> Just um, watch what you eat. Make sure that you're eating enough uh, fruits and vegetables, right? Um, drink plenty of water. Get uh, get outside in the fresh air and the sunlight. Uh, get exercising. Um, yeah, now if it's severe pain, you could try some Jamaican dogwood. And we've used that for all kinds of pain conditions. And uh, it's worked really well. I got into this years ago when I, I was looking at what can we use? You know, this is... It's been an argument for modern medicine for years, you know, like, uh, you know, there's we're, there's never a substitute for acute care. And um, I'm, I believe we should have ER um, clinics and we need to help people with emergencies. But um, at the same time, if you can find something better that worked for pain, instead of a painkiller, then wouldn't that be a good way to go? I, I learned this from a pain doctor. He said, if at all possible, don't get on pain meds because pain meds increase your pain. Can you believe that? <laughs> because they increase your toleration to pain. And so when they wear off, you need more painkillers. Yes. And mm -hmm. you can never get enough of what you don't need. So you keep taking more and more over time. And, you know, uh, back in Dr. Kellogg's day, did you know, uh, I read this, I think it was in the book, uh, Hydrotherapy, Rational Hydrotherapy for Nurses, I think it was called by Abbott. He was a student of Dr. Kellogg. But, um, do you know in the time of color, he was doing surgery, serious surgery with no painkillers. He was using ice for surgery, for pain. <laughs> wow. And he had the most successful operations. It was amazing. Mm. And, uh, and imagine what we could have been if we were following all the light. God gave us what a light to the world we would be. Wow, um, that is that is true, and the en enemy knows that. You know that's why. Yeah. Um, it, 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 I mean that we can go on to a tangent on this, um, but we know uh, if we were following the what we were taught, uh, what we were given, I mean we would be having um, people lining up just to come to us, you know, uh, no, we are going to the world. And so, the, um, yes, 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 I understand, understand. Um, question, um, you, have you heard about bitter lemon? Sorry, bitter yes. melon, bitter, bitter melon. melon. Yes. And the person is asking you, asking, I have some planted in my backyard waiting to be harvested. So yeah. I guess you can talk to her about uh, getting some of these bitter melon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned before, bitter melon is, is, is great for digestion and it's also very good for insulin resistance. So diabetics can use this to their advantage. How do you use it? Do you cook it? Do you, do you, you can, eat it in a you salad? Can, do you, what, what, yeah. what's the process? Yeah, you can cook it. Just eat it cooked or you could um, dry it, make a tea out of it. There are many ways to use it, but usually just steaming it and just eating it that way is be the best way to go. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, we are with uh, Dr. Lee. And uh, we're doing answer, question and answering, uh, right? We're doing question and answer. So the next question, uh, is there a herb that can reverse, let's put it that way, I need sleep apnea. Sleep apnea? Yes. Yeah, sleep apnea. Okay, so 
This is a challenging one because it does appear there are many different causes for sleep apnea. Um, now, there are some people that have benefit with sleep apnea with with uh, relaxing herbs. Okay, so things like uh, valerian. Valerian is one of the top herbs to use for that. Um, I don't know how effective it is, to be honest with you, with sleep apnea. Um, I haven't had enough people to really understand uh, you know, how effective some of these herbs are. But um, I would say that if you have serious sleep apnea, this may not be the best approach, but it's it could be worth a try. Um, this is where a good clinical and lifestyle analysis comes into play because disease has, let me explain something, disease usually has multiple causes and it's bearing down on the same problem, causing the same problem. We have convergence happening. All right, so uh, this is why you, it's very, very hard nowadays. Um, it's getting harder and harder to identify uh, the cause of disease because there's so many causes to the same problem. Mm. And so um, sleep apnea, uh, is is one of those so uh it tends to be those who are more within the normal weight have less problem with sleep apnea so if that's the case i definitely recommend um losing weight um and things that will cause you to relax you could also try soaking in a warm bath with epsom salts you could try uh see if that doesn't help um now i'm i'm not saying there's a magic bullet with sleep apnea it's a complex situation but um again sorry to be redundant but feel free to reach out to me i, I need to ask a few more questions to to be more specific in my answer all right thank you we have a hand up sister angela go ahead hi good morning happy sabbath uh, the person who asked about the bitter melon, what I yes. do with it, I when I buy fresh from the store, the South Asian store, I just use a spoon to remove the seeds and then pour a lot of salt of it and uh, put it in a strainer. And overnight, that tend to release some of the bitterness and then just steam it the way you would any kind of um, curry dish and put a lot of turmeric and curry and stuff like that, all your spices on it, and it's very tasty like that. All right. Sounds like you've mastered the art. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you for that advice. You're welcome. All right. Um, what can uh, pain in the knee? Pain in the knee? Yes, pain so in arthritis. the knee. Arthritis yes. pain? Okay, so... One of the things we, we do is we use a pain salve. Uh, we hit it from outside and inside. So inside we use things like turmeric root or um, pain aid, which has some devil's claw, turmeric, some Jamaican dogwood, licorice root. And that really helps with the reducing the pain and inflammation. Um, but we use a topical salve with some infused cayenne oil with some essential oils. And some of those essential oils are frankincense oil, we use clove oil, eucalyptus oil, winter green. Um, what else do we use? Peppermint it has a cooling effect. And that just helps the blood to increase circulation in the area. It takes down the swelling and inflammation. Uh, if there's been cartilage damage, I also recommend using some comfrey sap. And that has a chemical called allantoin, and it stimulates the, the repair of that cartilage or even bone. And it's the most amazing thing I've come across because it heals some amazing 
went and uh in fact i don't know if i can let me see here all right if i could share my screen i'll i'll give you um uh, let's see here all right can you all see my slide here yes okay good so here we go can can you all see that Yes, you can click the slideshow to get enlarged, the slideshow. Okay, yeah, yeah, so, uh, okay, there we go. So this is a diabetic open wound here. And um, sorry for, I should have warned you, <laughs> this wasn't going to be pretty. But uh, that leg that you see on the left is the same leg on the right as a different photo a few weeks later you can see it's not completely closed up fully but this is in the process of healing um this is uh, from using comfrey so this man applied the comfrey i was afraid it was going to be septic and you know people can die from septicemia in a short amount of time but um thankfully this man followed the advice and um he was a diabetic and, uh, you know, this is a major problem. If you've got diabetes and you've got poor circulation, this can easily occur. And so uh, within a few short weeks, um, using the comfrey, that, that was uh, what happened on the right there. Um, and I would say another week or two after that, completely closed up. I didn't have a picture of it. He sent me a picture uh, in the process, but um, didn't get one after that. So uh, that's the power of comfrey. Okay, so how do we go back here? Yeah. So we stop there. All right. So hmm. you're trying to stop the share? I'm trying to stop the screen share. How do I <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to help assist you. Uh, oh, thank you. You're welcome. You can continue. Um, so okay. thanks for that. Um, the question, another question is, how can you boost your B12? How can you boost your B12? And, uh, the screen is still sharing. All right, so boosting to B12. So for those who don't know, B12 is... Um, Um, you need to get B12 in the soil, you need cyanide, cyano, <laughs> cobalamin is cobalt. Okay, you need cyanide, you need cobalt, and you need bacteria and fermentation. So, um, so to get that in the soil, you need all those elements present. Now, um, unfortunately, the farmers use um, ammonia sulfate and it kills the B12 in the soil. And so unless you're growing your own food, you're probably not going to have any. Thank you, Courtney, I appreciate that. So uh, this is one thing that we do take as a supplement. Um, and um, we take a methylcobalamin it's methylated, so it's uh, absorbable in the body. Um, so we don't take this on from herbs or anything. We actually get this. I think the B12 is commonly um, sourced from fermented molasses. Okay, so it's, it's not actually um, in the food so much. It's actually produced by bacteria. And so, um, yeah, if you're low in B12, you could end up with some neurological issues later. Now, the, the, the amount of B12 that our body needs over a lifetime is like the size of an aspirin. It's very small lifetime supply. So we don't need very much. And the body can recycle the B12 um, over, you know, 20 year span. But... Um, if you're not getting B12 from your food, that's a good chance you, you're not, then it may be 
ways to use some type of supplement to help with that? So um, I know um, as as being a plantarian, um, plant source, um, mm -hmm. in the morning, instead of brushing your teeth, you oh, drink, down, drink down your um, your saliva and um, and recycle. <laughs> Use natural means of recycling that uh, B12 that is produced by those bacteria in your mouth. I, what... I've heard that the problem is is that you get trillions of a part, and you may not want to be around people that don't brush their teeth. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um let me go use uh uh hi um for high blood pressure and so so uh okay I'm just looking through the chat here. Alcohol any benefits in drinking Mabi. It's a kind of bitter bark that we use as drink. Uh, M-A-B-E-E, -E. ma B. You know, boy, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I've never heard that herb. Uh, is that from the islands or? Possible, uh, Sister Hazelwood, she's uh, from Guyana. Sister Hazelwood, unmute yourself and explain, please. Yes, Brother Courtney, it's a kind of bar. It is a bar. Okay. Okay, it's a bark. Okay. Well, you, you probably know more about it than I do because I've never heard uh, Mabi before. Um, Some people okay. pronounce it Mabi. 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 M-A-U-B-Y okay. is how I've seen it. Oh, yes, okay. yes. Mabi. 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 It's, it's, uh, it's very, very bitter. And it's the people in the islands where I had it at an international festival, they grew up with it, so they crave it. But oh. when someone who hasn't had it, like it's yeah. extremely bitter. I can only imagine the medicinal value since it's so bitter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll have to look that one up. I'm I'm not familiar with that that uh, box. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. <laughs> Women, thank you, ladies. Um, Sister Marjorie Morrow, um, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, excuse me a minute quickly. Let me just explain it quickly. In Barbados, it's one of our local drinks. Mm, 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 lovely. You mix it, brew it. It's one of Barbados' favorite drink. And you was, anytime you come to Barbados, you sit selling all over the place. You go anybody home, that you first never brew and give you, put a little essence in it or so and a little sugar and and they could use it for medicinal purposes too. It helps they say it's help me. I ain't no hold your own way. But it's a drink also. Sorry for buttoning. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, uh, Sister Cheryl. Um Sister Marjorie, go ahead. Hi, my um phone went out and I came in on the tail end of you talking about vitamin D12 and um, through the book, The Way Out, um, Depression, The Way Out by Dr. Neil Netley, I had started taking hydroxy B12 every day, but the little bit that I caught you talking about, um, I wonder if that's something I should be taking every day. Are, are you familiar with it? I think the right name for it is hydroxycobalamin. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Um, yeah, the that that form and also methylcobalamin are two that are more easily absorbable by the body. Uh huh. Yeah. So we have the other one. It's cyanocobalamin or denzel cobalamin. Um, so cyanocobalamin is not something I recommend because it has some cyanide in there. Oh um, wow. Yeah. So um, yeah. It's, but it's, it but it's okay as a like everyday supplement. It's a chewable yeah. tablet that he makes. Yeah, yeah, that that's fine. Yeah, that that's that's. Um, and no I, I want to say hats off to you, herbalist, because when I saw his um uh, for the same number of pills, like his was like I think twenty seven. So I saw this bottle that was seven dollars. I was like, oh come on, Netly, why should I pay you twenty seven? So then I went through the ingredients. 
and one of the ingredients in the other in the other one like totally wipe out your good gut bacteria and i said okay i paid a 27 <laughs> so hats off to you guys because what you what you all have is very different for what's on our shelves and i thank god for you all well well let me just share this with you that um a lot of the products in fact there was a, a study came out from new york um showing that most herbal products don't even have one of the original ingredients in the oh bottle. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of false advertising out there. Um, what we do is we get the herbs directly from the supplier, from the, from the grower, um, or big herb companies that we, we feel confident in, in their product. Okay. Um, and then we we um, cook it for 48 hours, and then we put it under a herb press and 10,000 pounds of pressure. And so uh, what people don't realize is that the most concentrated part of the plant that's medicine hangs on to the plant the longest. So when you put it under the, the pressure, you get what's called the dregs. That's like the very last part that comes out the plant and that's the most concentrated and so um, a lot of manufacturers they have a very weak or diluted or um, or should I say um, very questionable source of materials <laughs> so be careful of getting herbs from China <laughs> okay yeah um, just make sure. Actually, the best way to do it is grow your own. You grow your own herbs in your backyard, and then you can be sure where you, where they came from. <laughs> uh, thank you for that question, Sister Marjorie. Uh, Sister Angela, your hand is up. Go ahead. Okay, just two things. I thank you so much for the last statement you made about where we get our herbs from because 99% of what comes in from China is not real. And then folks tend to say, oh, well, I took that and it didn't work. And I know what I'm speaking about. So they yeah. have to be yeah. very careful, especially if it's in the powder form. So it's best for them to get bark or what they call cut and sifted as much as possible. But the powder stuff, it's a lot of filler in it. And that's why a lot of people are not being helped. That was one. But I want to talk about the mobby. Yeah. People need to research it. That, the mobby is excellent. I've done some thorough research on it years ago, and it's also good for cancer. It's in the same category that anything that's good for anything that's bitter, it's good for the liver, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's an excellent, excellent thing. The lady that I spoke earlier, minus the sugar, you don't need the sugar, but it's an excellent thing. So you might want to research that some more. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I didn't even know about this plant till. A few of your sisters jumped in, so thank you so much. I'll be sure to uh, look into that now Amen. so I have more understanding. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sister Angela. If I can just pick up something that the sister said about powder, she's she's very correct in, in that because there are some um, fillers that are put in, and especially capsules, um, capsulated herbs, uh, the least quality herbs. And this is one reason we don't use capsules because um, they require hydrochloric acid for extraction and they have poor absorption rates, about 38 to 52% absorption rates. So we use, uh, we recommend either a tea or a herbal extract, you get about 98% absorption because it's already broken down. It's already in a form that the body can assimilate. So um, capsules are like canned food. They're on the lowest end of the spectrum when it comes to uh, getting the best quality. Amen, amen. Um, thank, thank you for sharing. Remember to share the link. Um, this is information, you're not paying for it. Nobody zell you. You don't have to zell any money to anybody. You don't have to. 
Uh, it's right here, direct, and you're will, you can ask any question you want. And as we go on, there is a question here in the chat that says, um, the benefits of CMOS. I see CMOS is now coming out. I mean, everywhere, CMOS, CMOS, yes. CMOS. So the question is, the benefits yes. of CMOS, does it help yes. high blood pressure? Yeah, CMOS has about 92 minerals in it. And one of the primary minerals that people use it for is iodine. Um, and uh, yes, it, it helped. Did you say, d does it help with blood pressure? Is that what you yes. said? Yes, high blood pressure. High blood pressure. It depends. It's probably not my first on the list for blood pressure. Um, but it could help certain individuals with blood pressure issues. Um, if it's relating to any nutritional deficiencies that could be uh, triggering that. Um, yeah, but it's very good for the thyroid and uh, it's uh, something we use in our thyroid formula for hypothyroidism. Um, and some people use it for hair. Um, it's very mucilaginous. It's very good for the GI tract, uh, but the downside is that um, it could be sourced from places that aren't the best um, because it, it's basically coming from the ocean, right? So the the herb is, you know, this this the water is full of contaminants as well. So that's that's the thing. And any product you get from the ocean um, is going to have you know, certain levels of, of um, heavy metals and um, chemical products in there that, you know, it's hard to, to get those things. Well, it's impossible really to get those things out. So it's, it's a good idea to know where they came from. Yes, that, that, that is, that is so important because you're putting back, you remember the water, the sea water is also polluted with mercury. Yeah. And so you are, yeah. you're, you're putting in, <laughs> you're trying to get out and yeah, you have to be careful of the sources. There. So how do you prepare? Do you have to cook it first, uh, steam it, or uh, you can do it raw, you can soak it? Oh, what's the best way of getting the maximum effect from the mineral that it has? Yeah, well, it depends how you buy it. So, you know, you can, you can commonly buy it in a powder form. Um, and um, that um, that is very absorptive. So, you know, we we actually get it in pieces, um, and you can fill up a jar like like uh, less than ten percent of volume, and you fill that with water, and it will just absorb everything, and it will go gluggy, and fill the whole jar, and so. Um, it's it's like a sponge, and um, so you don't need very much. <clears throat> but yeah, when you put that in with other things, if you don't have enough water, it will just just expand tremendously. So I'm I'm not uh, to be honest with you, I'm I'm not a, uh, a a huge fan of it, but at the same time, it is helpful for people that have iodine deficiencies because iodine is not in the soil. That's what a lot of people don't understand. It, it leaches through the soil and it goes in these little tributaries, goes out into the ocean. So unless you're eating some type of, of seaweed product like kelp or anything, or, or the uh, Irish moss, you're not gonna have enough iodine. And they used to put iodine in bread up until the 1970s, and then they replaced it with bromide, uh, which is uh, a toxic halogen. And the IQs of uh, Americans dropped 10 points. Um, iodine is extremely important for uh, neurotransmission, is for digestion, for metabolism. In fact, your body can't make glandular tissue without iodine. Um, it's extremely important. If, if you didn't have iodine, you'd be dead. And one of the ways you can 
dumb down a nation is by putting fluoride in the water. And fluoride is, is a halogen that will replace iodine. And it leads to cognitive issues. And maybe, um, you know, that's the re one of the reasons why um, society is broken down so much and gone so crazy. <laughs> We're just not getting the nutritional needs, especially things like iodine that our brain requires to even be able to think rationally anymore. And thank, 